Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So my name is Yoshinobu Fudamoto from University of Geneva. I'm working with Pascal Ish. Um, today I'm gonna talk about dust attention properties and obscure star formation at of star forming galaxy that reached between four to six right after the reionization epoch. So as we all of us know that there's mainly two wavelengths range where we can observe the, the, the star formation activity of galaxies. One is the rest frame UV wavelengths and another is the far infrared wavelengths where we can observe uh, dust, uh, dust unobscured activity and, all, and dust obscured activity of galaxies. So these two wavelengths uh, range, wavelength emission from the two wavelengths is tightly connected from dust attenuation as you know. And if there's more and more attenuation exists in these galaxies, these UV spectrum becomes redder and redder and this the attenuated energy is transformed into the, to the, to the fine infrared emissions. So these uh, correlation between these dust attenuation and re re emission can be um, translated into the one of the relations, so-called IRX beta relationship. So this is the relation between the UV spectrum color and those, and the y-axis is the re emission in the fine infrared. So this relation is um, very useful, in particular for estimating the dust attenuation correction in the very high rest universe. For instance, if we observe the galaxy at rest greater than seven, in the typical case is that we only have the rest frame UV photometry. And even in this case, using this Rx beta relationship and the, the UV spectral slope measurement, we can estimate the dust attenuation correction and also can estimate even the infrared luminosity of these galaxies. So however, the one, one potential problem is that this dust, uh, dust attenuation is highly empirical relation. For instance, this dust, dust attenuation is dependent on dust, in, dust extinction line of sight effect of dust and the stellar to dust geometry and also the intrinsic UV slope from which we observe the reasoning of the UV spectral slope. So because of these dependencies, these IRX beta relationship or dust attenuation relation is should be examined and confirmed by observation directory. At risk around two, for instance, spitzer observations are deep enough to detect infrared emission of these galaxies, and Reddy et al. Find, found that these main sequence galaxy is still consistent with the local uh, relation found by Myron 1999. However, at the more high risk universe, the situation becomes a bit different because we, we need ALMA to observe fine infrared emission individually. And in the first, first ALMA surveys has revealed that the, this galaxy could be um, very faint in far infrared, suggesting some evolution of dust attenuation properties. And for instance, a couple of years ago, uh, Peter K. Pak 2015 has shown that this act, indeed, this IRX beta relationship could be different in a very high rest universe. And compared to the lower rest galaxies, this infrared emission is is much, much fainter than expected from the UV colors. However, these observations are uh, based on a relatively small number of observations. So we need to increase sample size to, to confirm and expand these studies. So uh, we studied the collaboration in the Alpine survey. So just quickly, introduction of Alpine survey is that this is the ALMA large program to observe large sample of main sequence galaxies at rest 4.5 to 6. Um, our main sequence galaxy is wide, wide parameter space, uh, almost two decks, both in stellar mass and star, form, star formation rate. And using 70 hour of ALMA time, we, we targeted C plus emission line and dust continuum and got a large fraction of C plus emission line detection and also measured a large amount of flux measurement of these galaxies. As you may know that, that the, the result of, from our Alpine survey has already been published and several projects is still ongoing. And if you are interested in, please look at this individual paper. But, but for the tomorrow session, we will, the Seiji Fujimoto will talk about C plus halo uh, studies and Yana Kusanova will talk about obscure star formation rate density and Gareth Jones will talk about C plus kinematics. So um, as you know, the Alpine survey is led by Olivier Lefebvre, who has um, sadly passed recently. Uh, he was, yeah, during this co collaboration, he was a very energetic leader of this collaboration. And I, it was great honor for me to, to work with him. And I uh, terribly feel, feel terribly sorry for his passing. 
Yeah, so let's go back into the uh, dust attenuation of high energy axes. So to study these uh, dust attenuation properties, we first need to estimate infrared luminosity of these galaxies. To do that, we first created the, the average infrared SED of these galaxies using alpine analogs in Cosmos in terms of stellar mass and star formation rate, similar to the alpine selections. Using st stack analysis of Herschel and Scuba 2 and all images, we created this um, average SED of applicable to these alpine samples to estimate infrared luminosity of these galaxies. And then because these galaxies have a large amount of ancillary data set, using these ancillary data, we performed SED fitting to estimate UV luminosity and UV spectral slope. So using these informations, we uh, created IRX beta diagram for, it, for these high ratio galaxies. These field points are individual detections and this uh, downward triangle is the three sigma upper limits and squares are the stacking analysis for which I used uh, both detection plus non-detections. Blue is ratio around 4.5 galaxy and red is for red, red, red is greater than five galaxies. So first thing is that these individual detection and stack analysis show that these galaxies have, have relatively lower IRX, IRX value than compared to the, to the lower ratio local, local IRX beta relationship. And another thing is that this galaxy, the distribution of beta apparently exceed much bluer than the intrinsic UV spectral slope measured or expected from the lower local universe. So our conclusion here is that this galaxy can be characterized by brewer intrinsic beta, characterized by minus 2.63. And then the, these, these galaxies are consistent with very steep dust attenuation curve, similar to SMC like, like dust extinction. And compared to the lower redshift galaxies, these galaxies shows that very deficit of IX values and these are consistent with the, with the previously found evolution of dust attenuation properties. Another interesting point of looking at this IRX value is that because IRX infrared excess is defined by the ratio between star formation rate from infrared and ultraviolet, we can uh, study the obscured fraction of star formation rates. For instance, Whitaker et al. 2017 has found that the obscured fraction of this galaxy defined by infrared star formation rate divided by total star formation rate is pretty much constant at between residue 0 to 2.5 and both of uh, all of the obscured fraction and versus stellar mass relationship follows the uh, same relation between these redshift range. If we plot our galaxy to this diagram shows that our galaxy at in particular for the redshift 5.5 galaxy shows very low obscured fractions, suggesting very rapid evolution of dust obscuration between these redshift. But nevertheless, this galaxy, at, in particular for the massive galaxy, already shows that the, about 50% of obscured fraction of star formation activity, suggesting that this uh, dust obscur obscuration is very important even in a very high risk universe or potentially in an in a epoch of reorganization. So just a summary, so we have found that the evolution of dust attenuation property and dust obscuration. And another important point is to go to the even higher redshift. So we are now working in with the another Alma Large program with Rebels. The Rebel is, Rebel is the PI of Richard Bowens and which will observe 40 UV bright main sequence galaxies with photometric redshift of 6.5 to 9. We will scan the C plus and O3 or O3 uh, emission line of these galaxies. So in the cycle seven, we already got 85% of data. And then we are getting very, this very exciting uh, result. And hopefully in the near future, we, will, can, we, can, have, we can publish uh, these exciting results quite soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we have a couple of questions. Um, the first is from Denis Bogarella. Using a sample of Redshift 5 LBGs, we found that a dust temperature of about 56 Kelvin. I think Alpine galaxies are also UV selected. Did you estimate the dust temperature for Alpine and how does it compare to other work? Yes. So, in, yeah, for example, in, in this SED, 
model, we measured about 40 Kelvin of peak dust temperature, which seems to be a slightly different from, uh, yeah, slightly a bit lower than the, the other result. Yeah. And also we measured like four galaxies for, with multiple multi band observation with ALMA and which, which are very consistent with our uh, results. So this galaxy have, seems to have about 40K in our sample. Um, and do you think there's any difference in the selection that's causing that difference compared to other samples? Yeah, very good question. Don't worry if you haven't thought about it. That's right in this. Yeah, it's a very difficult question, and I, I sorry, I don't have uh, no answer at this point. Um, we have another question from Laura. Uh, how do you compute this uh, infrared star formation rate for single sources having only one continuum observation? Yeah, that's a very tricky, tricky point. And um, yeah, we yeah in principle we don't know the 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 individual shape of fine infrared SD. So we are standing on the we are we are uh, pretty much relying on this average infrared or uh, average infrared SD. So yeah, on the on the uh, yeah, so individual sample could be the scattered because of these difference of high infrared SED, but in, on the on the ensemble average, we should be the safe sort of these stacks should be um, yeah con should be consistent with this average SED. So we are our yeah we are pretty much relying on this average data point. Um. There's a question from uh, Rebecca Bowler. Uh, in making your IRX beta relation, did you stack in bins of beta? Of beta? Um, McClure 18 showed that the stacking this way can cause a bias in the derived relation. Yeah, we, we tried both stacking based on the stellar mass and, and uh, beta. But yeah, in principle, we, yeah, so this is the like stack of, of the stack in bins of stellar mass. And we also have, have found a very low amount of infrared luminosity of these galaxies. So we, this low uh, IRX is, is pretty much consistent both from the bin, in bins of stellar mass and beta. Okay, um, another question from Tom Tones. Do I understand correctly that dust obscuration really gets going at the same characteristic stellar mass where AGN seem to set in? If so, do you have some intuition why this would be? Uh, uh, sorry, so do you, is this a question about AGN contaminations? Or, um, uh... I think it's that the dust obscuration gets going at a similar stellar mass to where AGN will have an impact. So do you have some intuition why this might be? Mm, yeah, it's a bit difficult difficult question because the identifying AGN is already extremely challenging and very interesting, interesting, indeed interesting question how much of the AGN exists in these high redshift massive galaxies. But at, at this point we checked the stacking of Chandra images and, and then other um, stacking of the UV spectrum but at this point I, we didn't find any um, yeah, good crew of how many how much of these galaxies have AGN or these uh, potential AGN contaminations? 